Hello and welcome to the second session in the ESM 101 series. Uh, in this particular case, it's the ESM 102 and it's the ArcSight Command Center. Now, this is a little bit of a change in the, I guess, does it fit perfectly? Maybe not perfectly, but it's a really good opportunity for us having in the 101 section just talked about the event lifecycle and how the events pass through the system and what do we do. There is one stage of this that we should introduce some terminology and technology just so it, because it's easy to do it at this point, but just also is a, it's a really good and viable point to mention some other technologies that we're using as part of this. So what are we going to briefly talk about? We're going to talk about what the command center is, some basic searching uh, that we need to do, and enhancing that with some what we call pipeline operations. It's a really good and easy way to introduce this before we start jumping into things like dashboards, field sets, and event filtering. So uh, let's jump into this. So we have search basics, right? What do we mean? Well, we need to build a search. Now, typically, we would do this uh, using an unstructured way of doing things. Now, uh, well, I'm going to actually do both, both structured and unstructured. But you can be more exact. And the better and the more exacting you can be in your searches, the more accurate you will be at finding the information you're looking at. So if you enter an IP address, you must be able to search for all the relevant IP addresses or they're all the relevant text information. So a typical unstructured search might be something like uh, an IP address, uh, a name, for example, Windows, or even a device type, for example, Unix. And you can just use those searches directly. Uh, so in this particular case, we're talking about the ArcSight Command Center. And there is a way of searching just directly on that data. And you can see that here. This is the ArcSight ESM interface. And we can see there's a way that we can just do a direct search against that. In this example, it's just with a uh, 10.0.112.206 address. And you can see that it's highlighting where that f matches within the field. So in this case, it's matching it on the destination address. Uh, now, remember, we talked about this before. Uh, source and destination are the real ones. Attacker and target are the derived uh, actual fields that we would see as part of the events within ESM. But in this case, we can see this matches with the destination address. It's an unstructured search, and it would match that IP address in any field if it appeared. In this case, it just happens to appear in one. What we really want to be doing is we want to be doing a much more of a structured search. So uh, an unstructured, we could get hits where we don't necessarily want to see that. So for example, that might hit on uh, some other information that's not in the destination address. So, so in this case, we want to be looking at and using the field names to restrict this down to certain sets of data that we want to look at. So for example, destination address could be 10.10.10.10 or destination port is not equal to 80. So it's anything but web browsing or the name contains at any point within a field within name, it could contain the, the words buffer overflow in that order. So when you start typing the field name, it'll drop down with the option to select that field or, or a very similar name. Now remember, the fields themselves are grouped into those 17 different groups. So it's pretty obvious to how now to start looking at those. So if you're looking at destination information, destination IP address, destination port, destination, destination username, you can start to understand, build those structured searches up very simply if we understand what those structures are and what the, the event groups are. So we can use lots of different operators. We can use equals, not equals, is null, so if it's blank, contains, starts with, ends with, is not null specifically, uh, in, between, and greater than and less than. So we can use combinations of those to create these rather quite sophisticated structured searches on the fields. Um, and of course, if you are typing it, just as a little hint there, if you press the field, type the field name and then press the space bar, it'll give you a list of the operators that are valid. So it's um, it's quite easy to use that and see that information. So going a little bit further on that match, uh, we see we've just taken that destination address equals 10.0.112. 206. Now it's not highlighting that because we're only looking in the destination address fields themselves. So we don't need to highlight that we've hit it in other parts of the events themselves. It's much easier, much more precise, and ultimately much faster way of doing that search. Now we want to look at this a little bit further we need to consider the time range that's been used. So uh, there are different ways of doing this. We can do a static time, we can, or we can do a dynamic time. So static means you're defining what the time ranges are. So for example, from midnight on the 5th of May, etc, etc. 
or we can use the dynamic one. So uh, we can actually have plus or minus units and we can define the period. Typically we indicate that with a dollar sign uh, and then we have a word that's behind that. Now note that it has to be case sensitive with no spaces. So what do we mean? So if we're looking at the last two hours of activity, we could do this as uh, start dollar now minus two hours end dollar now. Well, that means substitute the dollar now parts with the current time. So it, all it's going to do is do two hours back to now. It's quite simple and it's an easy way of doing things rather than having to break down and actually type out the specific time ranges that we want to define. Last day of activity, start dollar now minus one day, one D, end dollar now. It's quite simple, last 10 minutes of activity, and you can see that there as well. So the time range mechanism is a very powerful way that we can break that down. Uh, and just as a quick note here, there are the, uh, the broken down variables here that we could use just so you can see them uh, now, today, current week, current month, current year. Uh, and then we've got the actual units, so we could use minutes, hours, days, weeks, or in this particular case, don't confuse it with a capital M for uppercase for months as well, just so you don't, don't confuse that with the M for minutes. So you can actually define those and, and do the calculations accordingly on the time ranges. Uh, you can also then mix and match some of your operators here as well. Uh, and it's worthwhile digging into this in a little bit more detail. So we've got the and, or, and not here just to uh, understand the consequences of these. So we could do things like name equals Cisco event, NetFlow event or device product equals Cisco router. And we can actually just do this a little bit more specific around, in this case, the categories. So we can do it contains and not contains and not. So we can combine these together to create rather quite sophisticated searches using ands and nots accordingly. Now, you do have to note, though, you have to do this on a calculation process, though. So in the bottom example here, we have category outcome uh, equals slash failure or category significance equals slash hostile and Cisco. Now, if you were to put those all together, that would be different rather than the parentheses that are defined here, the brackets that are defined here. So the first evaluation would be the category outcome equals failure or category significance equals hostile. That is then added to Cisco as an unstructured search. So you can do combinations of structured and unstructured, but the brackets help us, uh, parentheses, help us define the evaluation sequences. This is just classic Boolean logic, and I encourage anybody to look into that. So I, I do have a little bit later on this as well. Um, just a quick note on case uh, syntax and uh, what we need to have as part of this. So there is case sensitivity if you're doing a full text search. It is insensitive, so you're just doing a, an open unstructured search. If you're doing it a specific field search, it is sensitive, so it does vary according to that. It's really focused around how an analyst would be looking at the data. If you just do want to do a quick hit, you just type an unstructured search. If you want to do a precise hit, you want to do a structured search using the field name. Hence the difference between f uh, the case sensitivity on or off. Um, exact matching as well. Uh, again, if you include it as a string with special operators and so on, uh, again, you can read that. I won't go into detail, but just to explain that there is some differences in the syntax and the case sensitivity on how you are doing it as well. Uh, a little bit about uh, search and, and tricks on this one. You want to start with a basic search and then narrow down from there. So it really good, uh, a really good way of looking at this is start with a broader search. Uh, and then, for example, when you go to click on the field, uh, a particular event uh, field of the actual search result you've had, um, You'd then add it as uh, an and uh, if you click the um, shift key as doing that, it'll actually add it as the and not. And if you hold the control key as part of that, it'll actually become a new search. So there's little little hints there we can allow us to to very quickly manipulate that search results. And then as the fields and we highlight those data, we can either use the uh, just click it, uh, use the shift or the control key to change how that operates as well. We can also enhance these searches using what we call search operators as well. So there's a whole bunch of them. I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail. Uh, I've got actual video examples of some of these elsewhere, but I'm actually going to talk about things like chart, sort, dedupe, head, tail, top, and rare uh, specifically because they're useful search operators for us to understand. 
Just very quickly, we can do a chart, uh, we can define the time span, uh, we can do uh, uh, calculations within that, for example, count, sum, average, min, max, and so on. Uh, we can even change the titles. So uh, you can see the example here. Uh, we, we're just looking at uh, the, the, the syntax that we're looking at specifically. We can see logger, and it's got the pipe symbol, chart, count, by events, category, uh, device event category name. W what does that mean? Well, it, you're doing an unstructured search logger because we haven't defined a field there. We're then putting that into a chart where we're doing a count by the device event category, so unique device event category and the names. So all it's doing is creating a chart of logger events of the category name and name. And the ex other example, we can see destination name is not null chart count by destination address. Well, again, what's that? Well, it's a field based search. So it's a structured search. Destination address is not null. So it can't be blank. So we want to have some valid address in there. And we want to do a chart of the count of the destination addresses we see. So how many destination addresses do we see within that time range? It's a very simple way of just generating a very quick chart. So in this case, we've just got a very simple chart. Here we can see this is a uh, device event, a uh, category device group is IDS network. So again, it's a structured search, just looking for IDS network events. And we're charting of the total number count by destination address. That's it. Uh, you can see that it's not sorted. Of course, there is further operators to allow us to do sorting. So we can define that. Uh, we can define the total number. We can define the top, either 1 to 10,000. By the default, it's 10,000. You might want to reduce that. We can do it at plus for ascending or minus for descending. Um, it's quite simple. So we can do uh, and change the way that it's done. Um, sorting is case sensitive. Uh, therefore, capital E error 105 uh, will proceed error lowercase e 105 just so you're aware of that uh, and you can see that uh, we can generate a sort I just quickly jump to the example of that one so this is the chart again we see that uh, category device group is IDS network chart count total number of the events by destination name sort minus so that's descending on the count field that's it Simple as that. We just count down. So it's just a very quick example that we could throw that data into a chart to very, uh, quickly visualize what we have as information there. There are some other operators we can use as well, things like dedupe, which allows us to remove duplicate events from those search results. So we can allow to operate on that. Um, it's probably the best example here is you can read the usage and you can see what's going on there. But probably the best example is, is the best way to sh is to show it effectively. So we can see here we do a, a search on the event. So category device group equals IDS network. So we're looking for all the IDS network events that we can see. And here we can have an example on some sample data. We're getting a hit return of around about 7,862 individual events within this time range. If we actually now deduplicate those based on the name, so we're getting multiple hits of events, possibly from different combinations of source and destinations. Uh, so in this case, we want to deduplicate all the duplicate events because we might get multiple ones for the same combination. So in this case, we do that deduplication. And in this case, now we only get 69 unique sets of, uh, of, of the data itself based on the name. So it's it, removing the duplicates there. It just gives you a quick idea of the uh, combinations there. Uh, head just gives us the uh, head just gives us the uh, first number of lines of the search results. So we can just actually see the, 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 the initial event information. So we can just do the head. It's a default number of uh, that we're going to see here. So it's just going to give us the first 10 results rather than having to search through everything. Um, if we don't define the number, it takes a default of 10. As you can see here, uh, you, we're actually just searching and we, we are, there will be more events than this, as we know from the previous examples that we just walked through. Uh, but in this case, it's just doing the first 10. So the searches result comes up much faster rather than having to search and find every single one within that particular time range. So if you're just looking to see if something occurred, it's a great way of doing things. Um, we can also do uh, tail, which gives us the last number of lines uh, that in a particular search. So again, same, same basic idea, but it's the last ones that have occurred uh, of this particular match hit. So in this case, again, 
we're doing the RDS network events and we're just doing the last 10, not the first 10, but the last 10. So again, we're not hitting the whole database and doing a full search to count every single combination. We're just doing the last 10. So again, if we just wanted to occur, it's occurred in the last time range. That's a very simple, easy way of doing things. At top allows us to give us a quick uh, tabular view of the information. Uh, again, I'm not going to go through the, uh, the the full details here because it's actually very simple. Uh, but you can see the example here is destination is not null and source address is not null and device product is PIX. Give us the top address uh, of destination address and source address. So it's basically giving us the, a very quick chart of the uh, most used source and destination addresses that match that search. It's as simple as that, very simple and straightforward. In this case, we're putting it into a, uh, by default, it's a chart. Uh, we just, in this case, put it into a pie chart and we can see this uh, IDS network events uh, and give us the top source address. So again, we can see that it's grouped as, it's calculated as out for the particular time range and hey presto that's where we get the results chart we can also do rare so this gives us the least common events um, it's again it's a really good way of uh, showing us a specific set of circumstances or events around a particular search criteria that allow us to identify things from a from a quick high level point of view so in this case give us the least common uh, events for this particular search so ids network events give us the least common ones so the, the ones that have occurred the least are uh, employee data protection resumes and attachments and so on so these are the rarest events that we see not the topest uh, ones that we saw a minute ago but these are the rarest and that ends the uh, quick walkthrough of the uh, ArcSight command center like I say this was a slightly out of sequence but it was useful to put those in so we can start talking about some of the field names and how they match to some of the event information uh, it's a very useful element of ESM to use uh, but we're actually going to jump in a lot more detail around uh, how we're going to look at and how we do some of the processing with the next session thank you very much